Hi friends, thanks for coming here to know more about my campaign to ban a nasty corrosive chemical hydrohydroxic acid that causes suffocation and global warming yet used in our junk foods you see. Also called hydroxyl acid or oxidane its correct scientific name. This obnoxious erosive chemical causes suffocation and global warming still excessively sprayed in our agricultural farmlands. A major environmental contamination friends. You see it's a chemical. It's also an industrial solvent and coolant and is a major component of the acid rain. Still our government does nothing. This chemical is even used in nuclear power plants. You see money sucking capitalist industries don't care. This chemical is omnipresent in today's consumerist lifestyle. Here are some of the examples. Juice, shampoo, in the production of styrofoam as a fire retardant in many forms of cruel animal research in the distribution of pesticides even after thorough washing the produce remains contaminated by this chemical you see friends will you support my campaign to ban this chemical say yes or no Well, you might have answered yes, naturally yes. Chemicals are bad, isn't it? Many have agreed to ban oxidane, this chemical. For example, members of the Australian Parliament, New Zealand's members of Parliament, a Canadian member of Parliament. In Finnish election campaign, a staggering 49% of the candidates agreed to ban it. List is endless. By the way, there is another name for this chemical. It's called DHMO, that is dihydrogen monoxide. Ring a bell? Friends, a general perception or a norm in our society is that the chemicals are bad. We tend to be suspicious when we hear the word chemical but at peace when we hear the words herbal or natural. There is a word for it in social psychology, chemophobia, the irrational fear over all chemicals. A related logical fallacy in philosophy is called appeal to nature argument. It goes like this, that which natural is good. N is natural, therefore N is good. Subconsciously, most of us fall prey for this fallacy. More alarmingly, this fallacy is a favorite psychological compliance tactic for pseudoscience and marketing propagandists who declare that their products are chemical free like this. Have you ever pondered is there anything called chemical free in nature? Even the purest among pristine water, the water from Antarctica where I had been is a chemical. All of the atoms and molecules that makes up the matter in this observable universe are nothing but chemicals. By the way, hydrohydroxic acid, that nasty chemical just a while ago I referred to has another name in our everyday life. It is W-A-T-E-R, water friends. Well, you might know naming of these chemicals are governed by a set of codes by IUPAC that is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. According to IUPAC, there is no single correct name for every compound. Hydroxylic acid or hydroxyl acid or hydric acid or dihydrogen monoxide are all acceptable terms like water. But I like hydrohydroxic acid, you see, because it sounds like a bit technical, you know, the scientific jargon perfectly fitting the mental imagery of the word chemical. IUPAC's recommended name for water is oxidane as I just referred earlier. Chemophobia friends stems from lack of mathematical and scientific literacy. Unfortunately, majority of us are scientifically illiterate. Scientifically and mathematically ignorant public fall spray for this marketing propaganda and silently believe that all chemicals are awful. Even the scientists who publish reputed high impact factor articles fall for the chemophobia and unknowingly believe in pseudoscience like herbalism friends. It's alarming. By the way, appeal to nature is a non-fallacy in philosophy. Know why? Because being natural doesn't mean that it's safe or effective. Some of the most dangerous poisons are natural. Have a look at what Rousseau, the French Enlightenment philosopher famously said. We do not know what our nature permits us to be. On the other hand, some of the safest and most effective drugs on the planet that have saved billions of lives are not natural. For example, vaccines against smallpox, polio, measles, mumps and so on. 
Vaccines are not natural. Does it mean vaccines are bad? Well, anti-vaxxers favorite argument is that vaccines are bad because vaccines are unnatural. Now you see the folly. In 1892, the famous philosopher and mathematician Gottlob Frege wrote the classic on the sense and reference. Many times what we sense and what it actually refers are not same. We sense chemical as bad while natural as good, isn't it? But in reality, the reference of these words are neither good nor bad. The nature or the whole universe is made up of chemicals. There are both safe as well as unsafe chemicals in nature. A common misconception is that the modern medicine is all about synthetic chemical drugs, which is completely false. How many of you know that more than 90% of drugs in modern medicine are plant-based? Plants are mother nature's medicine cabinet. This is a ploy of pseudoscience advocates to plot the alternative narrative, a post-truth. If you missed out, have a look at my previous episode on post-truth also linked up below. They call evidence-based medicine as allopathy, which is actually a derogatory term. Don't fall prey for this tactic. Allopathy is a pejorative term introduced by Samuel Hahnemann, the German who founded homeopathy in 19th century just to insult the science. Please don't use that term to insult our doctors and nurses and scientists who save millions of lives. Instead, always use modern medicine or evidence-based medicine. Modern medicine is scientific or evidence-based. What does it mean? Evidence-based medicine is, well, as the name says, evidence-based. It doesn't work on anecdotes or hearsays, which are too easy job of lazy people. For example, this drug worked for me or my aunt or my cat. Therefore, this drug is effective. That kind of argument. Such arguments are called post hoc ergo propter hoc in philosophy, which is indeed a logical fallacy. You need well-designed randomized controlled trials with appropriate sample size and robust statistical significance tests to call it evidence-based friends. That takes lots of money, time and efforts. It's a long process, friends. Carl Sagan famously said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That perfectly sums up the point. Nobel laureate physicist Richard Feynman famously said, if you cannot explain something in simpler terms, you don't understand it yourself. It's a mark of a genius to be able to explain a complicated topic in a simpler way. If you missed my previous video on reliable sources for health information where I introduced Cochrane Reviews and Hong Kong, two gold standards in evidence-based medicine, please watch in the link above, also linked up in the description section of this video. Yet another common misconception is that we should know exact mechanism of action to call it a drug in modern medicine, which is completely wrong. We really don't know how many of the common drugs exactly works. For example, the diabetic drug metformin or common paracetamol or digoxin, you know, that arterial fibrillation drug. But we do have extraordinary statistical evidence that these drugs work. And that is why these are part of the modern medicine. There are both effective as well as ineffective therapeutics in nature. And whenever a remedy is proven effective, it becomes part of the evidence-based medicine. Yet another common misconception is that the modern medicine have serious side effects. There is something called risk-benefit ratio in medicine. If side effects are more than the intended benefits, then such drug candidates cannot even get the clearance from the medical regulatory authorities like FDA. Many herbal products have serious side effects. Have a look at those references linked up below in the reference section of this video as well. Of course, many pseudoscience products have zero side effects. Well, they have zero effects too. You know, like hydrohydroxic acid, it has no effects too. To sum up, we should brush our critical thinking to fight the bullshit. Chemical free is just a marketing propaganda with zero science in it. Being natural doesn't mean it's effective or safe. And never forget Sagan's aphorism. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidences. All my videos are based on evidence-based peer-reviewed scientific research. Look at the description section of this video. Before going, I would like to say thank you to that anonymous Redditor who gave me a gold coin and 100 coins. Thank you so much. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you like this video, please click thumbs up, share it in relevant groups and subscribe to my channel. See ya in the next video.